Okay guys, last few minutes for antibiotics and then we'll be doing some of the miscellaneous MCQs and there are some MCQs which has got barely any sort of explanation these are just to be rolled over and just to be memorized but for now let's do sulfonamides I mentioned sulfonamide in causing SJ syndrome previously right so sulfonamide for SJ syndrome this mainly interfere in folate metabolism right so folate is required for DNA synthesis so it will inhibit folate metabolism right and the famous combination sulfomethoxazole and trimethoprim also called cotrimoxazole or available as uh, septron in brand name right there are some sulfonamides which are available topically like silver sulfadiazine mephanide and sulfacetamide there's something important about silver sulfadiazine this could inhibit both bacteria and fungi so it is important for dressing of burns right it will prevent infection and burn by inhibiting both bacteria and fungi say bacteria like pseudomonas and say fungi like uh, fungal keratomycosis so it's very important sulfur sulfadiazine for burns okay so which of the following can be used in treatment of fungal keratomycosis sulfur sulfadiazine for burns it can inhibit both bacteria as well as fungi all of the following are used topically except see these are topical ointment or creams available um, this has to be taken in oral form so a girl on sulfonamide it's acute intermittent porphyry another side effect is causing SJ syndrome it also cause G6PT deficiency uh, exaggeration which of the following is least nephrotoxic doxycycline is categorized under tetracycline so generally all tetracycline are excreted with the help of kidney and the main side effects is causing nephrotoxicity right about the tetracycline but doxycycline is eliminated with the help of liver so this drug doesn't need dose modification in renal failure patient it is safe for kidney it is not a big threat for kidney so it is least nephrotoxic which of the following acts by inhibiting cell wall synthesis we discussed this right in the beginning when we started beta lactams so beta lactams like penicillins and cephalosporins or carbapenems inhibit cell wall and also some buses and some cycles and some vans like bacitracin cycloserine and vancomycin all of these inhibit cell wall cefepim is a cef uh, is a cephalosporin right so it inhibits cell wall which of the following fluoroquinolone has maximum half-life max mox max mox moxifloxacin longest half-life all of the following are bactericidal agents which are bactericidal agents pens and cephalosporin penicillins and cephalosporin are very suitable for microorganism right so penicillin and cephalosporin are bactericidal so penicillin and cephalosporin are very suitable for microorganism and from this statement you could also say that aminoglycosides, vancomycin, fluoroquinolols and metronidazole are also bactericidal. Okay, so which one of the following will be bactericidal except it's tigacycline. It's a sort of tetracycline guys. It inhibits protein synthesis and it's bacteriostatic. Okay, so pens, CEF, aminoglycoside, vancomycin, fluoroquinolone and metronidazole these are settled drugs which of the following drugs will not precipitate folate synthesis okay let's derive this I talked about phenytoin in hot malika and malika M was for megaloblastic anemia which was due to folate deficiency sulfa drugs also cause anemia that's also due to folate deficiency and if you take alcohol for long time you'll have anemia that's also for a deficiency you are left with chloroquine this is how we can solve by exclusion which of the following drug is drug of choice for severe falciparum malaria now it's if it's falciparum malaria you always start with artemisinin therapy because chloroquine has got resistant right chloroquine now no more acts on falciparum malaria it is always restricted for uh, plasmodium ovale or say vivex okay but still we prefer artemisinin therapy 
So with severe, we give intravenous artesunate. Which of the following drug is least likely to cause interstitial nephritis? I talked about interstitial nephritis as a side effect of anti-staphylococcal drugs like methicillin and nephicillin. They cause interstitial nephritis. But some of the cephalosporin like cephalothene and some of the uh, broad spectrum antibiotics of penicillin like ampicillin also cause interstitial nephritis. So you are left with heparin.